a lot of kids who come in here to go to the U of A and they come down here and they drink at the hut and they don't have any idea where that used to be. They thought it was built for here. Yeah. But it's now a symbol of 4th Avenue. Former state legislator Steve Farley knows exactly where the Tiki Head used to be. He would take his daughters to play mini golf at the one-time East Side staple, Magic Carpet Golf. One of their favorite places in the world to be. But in 2008, after 40 years in business, Magic Carpet Golf closed. It would be demolished for a car dealership parking lot. My first thought when we heard they were closing is, what are they going to do with everything? Local business owner Sam O'Shaughnessy was not alone. Steve Farley knew he had to save as many of the iconic statues that graced each hole as possible. Tucson too often, we tear down those things that are precious to so many people who, were, who grew up here. Um, this was a place where I had an opportunity to say no, yeah. not this one. Farley and Valley of the Moon volunteer Charlie Spillar teamed up to try to save as many of the statues as possible. They organized a one last round event at Magic Carpet Golf. We could have people have a lot of fun, say goodbye to the golf course, and raise money to save them at the same time. It was like a part of the fabric of growing up in Tucson. Yeah. Phil Villarreal grew up playing at Magic Carpet Golf. He covered the closing and dismantling of the iconic spot for the Daily Star and wrote about Farley and Spolar's efforts to find the statue's new homes. They got it done one by one. He found uh, businesses that would take some of these statues. He found private collections, uh, private residences that they'd post them up in, his, in their backyard. They couldn't save everything, but they saved a lot of them. Had they not done that, we might have lost everything. Spillar had four of those statues moved to Valley of the Moon, a special place for kids to play and learn. He saw the vision. He saw it right away, that the Valley of the Moon would be a great place and would fit in with the whimsical, fun atmosphere. There is a lot of concrete in these things. They are heavy as heck, and they held together really, really well. One by one, they moved the statues from Magic Carpet Golf to locations all across the city. For the statue of the bull, that meant using a crane and a flatbed truck to make it to O'Shaughnessy's Irish Steakhouse off Tanka Verde near Tucson Country Club. Ferdinand is his name, is uh, 13 feet long, 10 feet high, and it weighs 3,000 pounds. It's made out of number five rebar and gunite and concrete. So it was quite a chore even moving this yeah. bowl. The statues were all designed and built by Michael Kautza, who also built the giant boot on Sabino Canyon, the castle at Golf and Stuff, plus the matador and bowl in front of Casa Molina. There are more than a dozen of the Magic Carpet Golf statues around town, as well as the restored Magic Carpet Golf sign. You never know when you'll stumble across one. I found the monkey statue driving through the Dunbar Spring neighborhood. It's tucked away in the side yard of a private home, restored by its owners. Whenever you encounter them, it's this amazing uh, serendipitous event. You, you just feel so blessed. And, oh, wow, look, I, I, got, I got a piece of magic carpet yeah. today. You can find an alligator and a serpent on the north side, the sun over on the east side, or the T-Rex moved to a business in the south part of town. Farley says even though the statues are spread all over Tucson, they still transport us back to those magical times at Magic Carpet Golf. You can step outside of your normal life and be in a whole nother fantasy land. And we need more things like that. Steve, I want to thank you very much. Absolutely Arizona are the statues of Magic Carpet Golf. Thank you very much. <laughs>